All right, so we are here with Chris out in Houston, Texas. Chris, I appreciate you making some time to be able to, uh, you know, give us the behind the scenes about not just the car, but you. I appreciate you. Yeah, absolutely, my friend. Thank you. So, you know, we had a great weekend here in Houston, right? And we're about to head back up to Austin. But being able to carve out some time to have a conversation, to talk about the build and the whys behind it. You know how this goes, right? Everything I do is more about you and the people in the community and the culture, not just the car. So let's kind of get right into it. I mean, your vehicle has been in various events and there's a lot of very beautiful photos of it and you've done a lot of tasteful things. So what is the reasoning behind this build? You know, obviously I think when I, uh, when, when I was back in high school, um, this car had come out and was released by Honda uh, back in 97. And so I was going to high school around that time. And when I first saw the car, I just fell in love with the shape and the flow and the way the body lines of the car. Specifically the fifth gen. The fifth gen. Yeah. But part of that was uh, because I love the shape of it where it kind of very similar to the third generation. Mm -hmm. um, so obviously when I was in, in high school, I had a little part-time job that I was yeah. working at a grocery store. And one of the managers had a third generation uh, prelude. And I was always just, you know, no car, no money saw this really clean black third generation that this manager had there and I was like man what, what? did he fix it up or it was just a stock clean it was, black it was third it gen. was stock but clean yeah and when I saw the body lines of that car I was like wait a minute and at that time the fifth gen came out I was like wait they follow the similar lines to uh -huh, the third gen uh -huh. and I just kind of fell in love with this car um, but at the time this car was priced pretty high it was about 25k when it was really brand new, mm -hmm. and me being in high school, I could not afford that car For sure. at the time. Um, so ever since then, when I saw the catalog and saw the brochure of the car, I saw the technology that was within the car, ATTS, being an SH, um, I, I, I was just, that was my goal. I was like, I want to get this car one day, I want to try to get it and save up money. Yep. And eventually, uh, it took a while, but a little bit after high school and I got into college, I was like, you know what? Um, they had released in 01 this specific color, Electron Blue Pearl. Yep. And once this color came out, it really kind of made a special point in my in my head that I was like, okay, that's the color. That's my favorite color already, blue. Okay. And it came out with this color. And, and the added, shade of it, you were like, that's it. it, I'm gonna get one. That was the one. So it took um, about two years into college, it took um, a while for me to find one because at that time they were already used. It was about 2003, 2004 when I started looking for them. Yes. And then um, it was almost impossible for me to find this car. Um, and it took about three months and I found this specific car in San Antonio. So okay. it was garage kept, 30K miles, very well maintained. Um, like it was perfect in my eyes. So I made the drive down to San Antonio, picked it up, and it's been with me ever since. Okay, so the color, the chassis, everything about it, and then you find it, right? You find it and you go get it and you bring it home. Mm -hmm. And did you have a vision or a plan the way that everyone sees it now, you know, with the Mugen Arrow and the wheels and, and all of these things, and we're gonna get to the engine bay that you put obviously a lot of effort into, but did all of those things already exist in your head or did it evolve over time? It definitely evolved over time. I think when I first got the car, um, Wanted to keep things simple, yeah. And what most people do is just do, you know, wheels or a suspension. Um, so it was very much an OEM plus, very basic uh, goal that I wanted for the car at that time. And what was that? What did you have? What mods um, in your head? Mods were basically just a front lip. Mm -hmm. um, at the time, they have a real nice Type S lip, which is very simple. Yep. Just an add-on lip on the front, mm -hmm. and you can keep the existing sides and rear, and it's like a perfect flow. Yep. Um, and then. <clears throat> From that point on, the other mods, uh, traditional first mods were like JDM Fogs that come uh, on the Japanese models. Those are uh, installed on there. And yep. then um, Type S intake, all the basic uh, add ons. And so that's what you had in mind and you executed that. But when did simplicity in that form not become enough? You know, obviously, I think once. 
I started becoming more participating on the Prelude online forums or the Prelude okay. forums. Sure. I started seeing some of the cars that were um, from Florida, from California. A lot of just really nice builds that were out there, and I was like, kind of drew inspiration from those cars back then. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Any specific ones that you can recall right um, now? There was one specific one. Um, there was a guy in Florida. He had the exact same color that I did, and he had Advan Cruisers okay. on his car. And I remember seeing a picture of it where it was in front of a palm tree, and the picture. And then it was it was just it was beautiful just seeing that car and seeing it on eighteens it was eighteen inch yep. Advan Cruisers yep. and that looked just kind of just whoa if I want to do eighteens then I'm gonna have to do an extra body kit or a lift kit on it to kind of make it look more okay for the body to flow and do you remember where did you see that photo was it on a forum was it on Facebook where was it do you remember? it was uh, specifically on the Prelude online forums back in the okay. Day. And that, that one just stood out to you. Mm -hmm. So that's where you decided the, the, the lip kit, the sizing of the wheels and all that kind of thing, right? And yes, what sir. year was that? Uh, that had to be 2006, 2007, when I started seeing those pictures. Okay, so that gave you the inspiration for the outside, but what about all the, the inspiration for what you've created thus far in the engine bay? That is... That's kind of more of a recent thing. Obviously, case swaps have been coming popular over the years, and then um, <clears throat> I just felt like there was an opportunity for me to just, I was curious to see, you know, how that engine would, would work in this chassis. Yeah. Um, yeah, and so it just kind of steamrolled. I ended up getting the engine, um, fabricating mounts yeah. to get it in this car. Um, yeah, and ever since, I've kind of just, Obviously, the K-Series has a massive aftermarket, and that was one thing that I did love. All right, so we talked about the K-Series, right? You, you saw that, you saw the aftermarket support, and you said that you wanted to utilize it for your build, right? So you have here, and you know, from the people online who have seen it, it's one of the favorites, and we're gonna just, you know, take the time for you to walk us through this, because this is a very, very appreciated engine bay by a lot of people. So, K series turbo intake manifolds, intakes, right? Man, you know, like you, you name it, it's been done, and yet people with a certain kind of fine tuned execution can always make their stand out, right? That's one thing that you've done. So, walk us through this particular case setup and why you used what you used. Well, you know, obviously, I think with the K series, there is a massive aftermarket support for it. Yeah. Um, and um, I just wanted to look a little bit different. I knew one day when I got the K-Series that I wanted to go turbocharged. Okay. Um, but, you know, usually whenever you see a, a turbocharged K-Series, the traditional or the more common method would be to do a sidewinder setup. And I didn't really want to go that route in, in this chassis. So I kind of wanted to keep it more of a, a, just a different look. So I decided to go with the top mount uh, turbo setup. Yep. And so it's using a Borg Warner EFR 7670. Um, <clears throat> yeah, and so I, I love the turbo, it just, it's, it's, it works great. Okay, so you went with that turbo and then, I mean, for the people that know this particular intake setup, how did you find it and what made you want to even utilize this? All right, so for the, uh, the actual intake filter box from Group M, this is one that I carried over from the H series. Yep. So it was originally uh, made for a DC2. Yep and um, I made it, I kind of retrofitted to work with the H-Series. And I was one of my favorite parts from the old setup that I, I wanted to kind of incorporate into the new K-Series. So luckily with fabrication, there's a guy in Austin named uh, Russell Walker, I was able to do a custom intake arm and was able to fit it into this little space that, uh, to make it work with the K-Series. Okay, and then, so you have the intake there, but what about your intake manifold? How did you decide to utilize this? and? and uh, you know, the inspiration behind that. Well, that intake manifold, I remember seeing a, uh, a video blog from uh, RS Future Amir. Mm -hmm. He has his K-Swap uh, KNSX and stuff. And I remember seeing his uh, intake manifold. And I was like, wait a minute, where does this come from? Where is this? And then I saw a little bit more background information about how, how uh, beneficial it was for his setup. And I obviously loved the look of it. And so I contacted this uh, company, Prattworks, uh, out of uh, Malaysia. Yep. And they were able to uh, get that over to me. Awesome. And, yeah. Absolutely awesome. So the cleanliness of it, some titanium, Group M, 
a Malaysian company's Pratt Works intake manifold with individual runners. You know, it's just, it's classy, it's clean. And um, oh, what is the power it's making? So it did do about 445 on ethanol. Okay. So uh, at 12 PSI. And then did you also do a pump gas too? It does, it, it is running on flex fuel, so I can run 93. Okay, what does it make on 93? On uh, 93, roughly about 390, uh, about 13, yeah. 14 PSI. That's a fun street car. That's a fun street car. I mean, it's absolutely beautiful. I mean, okay, you guys, you guys know how this goes. You're going to be able to find absolutely gorgeous photos of this setup. This is not so much about the setup as it is Chris and why he made this setup the way it is. So you want to see amazing photos, go to Google. Other than that, right now, we're talking to Chris on the whys and the wares like Malaysia, Borg Warner, Group M. You guys know about Group M. So, you know, Chris, it's really, really cool to talk to you about this. Um, the Mugen Aero, the wheels. You picked a lot of really classy parts for it, and even with the interior, right? Interior is quite simple, but it, there's people who, they're like, I wouldn't even touch those seats because they, they think they're too expensive, for example, which, you know, money's relative, right? You know, it's, it's not the same, but instead of going with these Recaros or that, or those, or what made you pick these particular seats? Well, yeah, with these uh, Recaros, I didn't really want a, a racy look to it. Uh, originally, I had, S2000 uh, seats in the car. Yeah, and I think I remember are, that, yeah. Those have always been more of a classy um, seat from the S2000. So when I saw these Recaros when they came out, it, it reminded me very similar to the S2000, but it has more of a luxurious, kind of a classy look. Absolutely. To the car, uh, which is what I was going for, kind of keep the original um, look of, you know, Preludes when they came out, they were never really a a um, a uh, track specific car because at the time the Integra Type R was out, the Prelude was more of uh, in the market of you know luxury. So it's more of a luxury car. sports car, and you wanted to keep that look, right? Yes, sir. And that's what happened. So I ended up putting uh, picked out the car sports for CSs. Yeah. Uh, they have that similar look, a very luxurious, classy. Yeah, absolutely, and absolutely. Yeah, and so it tied it into the car, and I kind of kept that theme throughout. Keep it simple and classic. Simple and classy is exactly what it is. The, the black leather, it is basically, it feels luxurious. I mean, it could be the interior of an M, you know, something like that. And I think that overall, you know, you absolutely, uh, you know, just killed it with this car. Okay, my friend, so how you found the car, why the color, why the chassis, why the, the motor, right? Why the setup? Now, the question is, is why out of all cars, all combinations of engines, why have you not only continued to make this one better, but not done any other chassis, not added to the collection? What is it about this that makes you wanna just keep tweaking it to make it better when most people would say, when it was H, it was great. When it had these wheels or those wheels before, it was great, it was perfect, mm -hmm. it was lovely, right? Because people have shown you a lot of love, right? Online, it's an amazing community that we have in that sense. So why do you continue to push this one rather than maybe start a whole different car? Well, I think it comes down to this was my original love, you know? High school. My first love. This is just really, it's, it's funny when you think about that, but yes. it really is. And it's, it's just kind of, it's going to be my lifetime car. Just that simple. It is. So there it is. You guys, I absolutely love that. It's just as simple as that. First love. And that's, that actually hits me like all up in this area, like in the fields, because my first car was my EG. If you, I don't know if you guys remember that Honda tuning in 05. And I made the mistake that he did not where somewhere along the line, I sold my first car, my first love. So to hear you say that actually is amazing and how you will not let it go and you're staying true to it. So, you know, Chris, we really appreciate you, um, you know, taking us behind the scenes, both of the car build and of you as a person and a builder and enthusiast. So thank you, but you know, you guys, before we end, let's go for a ride. You down, Chris? That's good. Let's do it.
So this is the Bucky's you were telling me about? Yes, sir. Dude, it's like a hundred pumps and like a crazy uh, car wash and then a, what is it, like a full-blown grocery store basically? Almost. You got so many snacks inside. I'll probably grab a few things. I've never been to a gas station that's this big and has traffic. They should have like a stop sign. <laughs> okay, so I just don't feel comfortable going up in a store and recording a bunch of random people. But I wanted to because that Bucky's was amazing. Could have spent like an hour in there. Fresh food. I think there was furniture. You said they sell GoPros in there. Uh, the car wash and then and then uh, beef fresh beef jerky and there's like a there was like a, a dessert bar with like fudge yeah. like fresh made fudge I'm like cheesecake. what the what cheesecake like yo like what kind of multifaceted gas station is this shit was crazy but shout out to Chris and a couple other of the people in Houston who were like you need to go to a Bucky's imagine somebody telling you hey you should go to a gas station but I understand now why.